Ladies and gentlemen, today we are nerding out with Jericho. Grab your beanies, grab your Uggs, grab your Starbucks and your avocado and toast. Sit back and enjoy the show. So my Jericho guys went through several iterations. I played a lot of games with it. So I'm not doing a live recording this time with it, but I am showing you guys a couple of playthroughs of naturally back-to-back -back wins that I had for my final iteration of the deck. So let me talk to you about it first before showing you the deck list. So first I wanted to try out to see how, you know, what variety I could put into a Jericho deck. So I tried out a Vergon deck first because I like the fact that I could either, you know, have Teo, Chalice, you know, to dig for Vergon. So I could either use my Shadow Energy and my Tainted Oracles uh, to draw and use and use uh, Ergon to, to slam the board with Arcane Energy, right? But if I needed my Shadow Energy for whatever reason, like Warrior matchups or uh, Lackmire decks, then I could use my Shadow Energy for that instead after I set up my, my Vergon combo with Chalice and then use Vera for draw, right, with my Tainted Oracle. So I tried that, but it just felt way too slow. Uh, then I tried just a standard priest build, but with chalices to draw. Um, I liked being able to dig for things uh, with chalice. Um, however, chalice's strength before was being able to set up uh, your future plays early and being able to draw like the bottom three cards of your deck and, and set up. But because it took three cards from your deck, it was really only good um, early, early on. But once your hand filled up, then you couldn't really use it. Uh, so two makes it easier for later, but if you're drawing later, you've already gotten most of the cards that you need. Um, so why isn't just drawing with why isn't we were better? Plus on top of that, why isn't is adding extra damage uh, for you to add onto the board or onto the opposing hero. Uh, so all in all, Chalice is just not a viable draw engine right now. It either needs to go back to three shadow energy, so it becomes that early board option, that early. Uh, gameplay setup option or it needs to be dropped to one shadow energy in its current form um, so yeah it would be repeatable to use it but you don't get the the damage benefits that wizen gives you so now that i got that out of the way how i got uh decided to go for a more standard priest build let's look at the deck lists here so let me pop it up on the screen and boom there it is so one thing you notice it is a garena road uh priest deck now for both Jericho and Zana, Greena really is the way to go. Um, it's the best build that there is for you. It's similar to how if you're playing Nishaven or Lost, uh, Irem is the only way to really play it. Now, I know I did play a Rush Mage with Elad, but really you should aim for an Irem Elad if you can too. Um, Aramia is really the only one that can um, get away from using Irem because she can go Pyramia or even Twilight if she really wanted to. Um, and that's the same thing with Priest. If you want to get away from Garena, then you're kind of going to have to play uh, with uh, Threbin. Um, now, you know what Garena does. It reduces the cost of your fatties, lets you dig for fatties. Um, and because it reduced the cost of fatties, I felt like Devoted Knight um, loses a lot of value in that deck. Because, yeah, if you get it on T3 and have a Garena in hand, you can start off fast really early. Um, but if you don't have that Devoted Knight early, or if you get into the later parts of the game, like turn seven, turn eight, uh, Devoted Knight is no longer necessary for his ability. So for more than half of the game, or maybe even the entire game, if you don't get an early Devoted Knight, um, its ability is pretty worthless for you. So in a Garena deck, um, I would actually go for Priest of the Light, which is what I did here. Priest of the Light is always good, maybe outside of if they're at zero shadow energy you need to put an ally in the board but even if you do that you're still getting extra health out of priest of the light so i feel like priest of the light is always better in a garena deck if you're a non-garena priest deck then i would probably go for more of a devoted knight build um, because at that point it gives you the extra resource acceleration whereas in a garena build garena is giving you the resource reduction cost for most of the allies in your deck you see we have 20 allies here 10 or 4 cost less, 10 or 5 cost more. So Green is reducing the cost of half of the allies in this deck, and it lets you search for them if you are if you don't control any allies. Um, 
I'm using two Rising Staff here, not four, because I wanted that, those four Tainted Oracles. Jericho doesn't have the ability to heal himself on demand like Zana does, so I wanted more, uh, so I wanted more presence on the board to kind of draw damage away from Jericho, and Tainted Oracle kind of gives you that, because if they don't hit Jer Tainted Oracle, Tainted Oracle is just going to hit them in the face in return. So that's why I like having the four Tainteds in there instead of four Wizens, but we still have two Wizens. Um, two Book of the Curses, two King's Pride, so you got two, two, and two for your primary items in this deck. Uh, Book of Curses, pretty standard nowadays in Priest decks. Same thing with added, adding those two King's Pride. Even in a Fatty deck, you still have those King's Prides in the deck. Um, you don't have any healing on demand, like through Healing Touch. Um, instead, we have two Knights of the Crimson Dusk and two Adler the Just to give you that extra healing on top of the Priest of the Light. So that really feels good there. Uh, human decks, um, if you can fit them, you should have both Sorcerer of India and two Braxnoian Soldier. Um, they're both just really good, especially Sorcerer right now. So I have two of each in here. Um, and then I have two Visco, which goes really well with King's Pride and Garena. Now it's five cost, a uh, five cost Visca hasted onto the board. Um, on top of extra two attack while you have King's Pride in play. It's added weapon tech too, because she's only taking one damage from those weapons. Uh, so just a good uh, priest ally uh, around. Um, if you're using at least King's Pride or Alvin the Brave, because you or Garena in this case. Because uh, just a plain 3-6 Visco, 6 cost doesn't feel good. So you kind of want something to give you a little extra added value of using her. Uh, two Nathanius. Nathanius just goes really well with Resurrection. Try not to use any Nathanius. Try not to use your Resurrection until you have Nathanius in your graveyard, because then you know that Ally is going to be on top of your deck. So Nathanius is guaranteed to give you value uh, when you play him after that. Uh, then two Adler the Just uh, stated, and then your basic abilities that you normally see in Priest decks: Retreat, Focus Prayer, Resurrection, and Tidal Waves. Um, so now let me talk about the matchups here for you guys. Um, your priests are still going to be weak to a lot of the things they've been weak in the two in the past. That's going to be mages, whether that's Irum, whether that's Pyramia. You're going to be weak to those. You're going to be weak to Darklaw. He goes very fast. Yeah, you have four focus prayer, but Darklaw normally has eight weapons. Uh, so good luck getting through all those. Fisca will help a little bit. Um, and let's see, I would say those are in Lance. So mages... Darklaw, Lance. There, three. Mages, Darklaw, Lance. There you go, guys. Ah, I can use a camera. Ha ha ha. All right, so those are going to be your primary weaknesses uh, for Priest to look out for. And that's why we have the tech that we do in this deck. Um, so when you include tech in your deck, you include tech for things that you are weaker against. So we know we are weaker against Lance. We have Braxnoian Soldier in there. Uh, we have Adler the Just in there. We know we are weaker against Mages. Uh, we have Priest of the Light in there. We have Book of Curses in there. We, again, Adler the Just really fits for a lot of our matchups. Um, Dark Claws can give us problems. We have Focus Prayer. We have Sorcerer of Endia. Um, so these, we have Visca. Uh, so ally tech in your deck, even tech allies, like the way priests like to play, they should all have a purpose for being in there. You don't want to include tech just for the sake of including tech. Uh, you put tech in there that you have weaknesses against. Uh, so that's how I came up with uh, the list here. So, uh, yeah, I think I've gone through... gone through. My, oh, yeah, who are you going to be strong against? Now, the thing is, a priest is not particularly strong against anybody, I would say, um, because priests are those that um, their weaknesses aren't as weak, um, but their strengths aren't as strong either. They're kind of like a middle-of-the-road balanced kind of class. If you are going to be strongest against anyone, it's going to be Elementalis and it's going to be Bloodfang. Um, that's because they are 100% relying on those ally abilities on the board, whether that's Bloodfang's free ally cost, whether that's Ellie building a big board. Um, you could argue if you're playing a Humonk Reika too, um, these are the decks that you're going to be strongest against because Tidal Wave just completely annihilates their entire strategy uh, that they're trying to aim for. So I would say those three you're going to be strongest against, and I've already mentioned who you're going to be weakest against. Um, so that's going to be it for Jericho, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. I enjoyed playing through it. And I'll see you guys next time.